Hello guys, welcome to Mordheim City of the Damned and this is a game that just came out yesterday I think it uh, spent some time in early access and now it's had full release and I've played it for about three hours and I've been really enjoying my time with it so I thought I would do a let's play series there's a bunch of tutorials here that'll teach you all of the basic mechanics of the game and there's uh, a lot of statistics and stuff like that to keep track of and then you just start a warband and you can either play online against other people with your warband or you could play against the AI in skirmish mode or you could play uh, the campaign. So we'll start up a new warband yeah! and then we'll play the campaign. Yeah! Go with the human mercenaries here. There are four factions that you could choose. You could also go with the Skaven, Sisters of Sigma or Cult of the Persist. But we'll go with the human mercenaries. So here's our war camp. Mordheim City of the Damned is a game about making the most of a dire situation and is designed as a hardcore experience. The decisions you take while leading your war band are permanent and your actions in combat may lead to irreversible injuries for your warriors. The campaign will end after the fourth time that you fail to deliver weirdstone shipment requests to your faction. Plan carefully and gird yourself against the horrors of Mordheim. So the game functions a little bit like uh, a roguelike because you, the campaign has uh, randomly generated missions and it also reminds me a little bit of when you play XCOM in Iron Man mode because all of your mistakes are permanent you cannot reload an old save to make things good again when your soldiers die, they die and when you make a mistake, you're gonna cry, that's just it and if you fail to deliver uh, the weird stones to the shop four times in a row when your faction requests them, your campaign will end and you can also run out of gold so you can't pay your, your mercenaries and that's also the end. So you can see here when you just start a new warband, all of these options here are locked until they are explained to you. Um, so let's just head into uh, warband management and get going. I'm not going to read any more of these windows for you, I'll just explain the mechanics as we go. This is a, a leader. Every little warband has a leader, and that's typically also your strongest character. And we should uh, customize him a little bit. We'll click on him. And you can see his uh, name is Johan von Falkenberg. If you head over into customization, you could change the name here. Let's just do that. We we'll call him Lucian. You could also write a biography if you wanted to and you can change all of this stuff as well for example if you don't like the color of the helmet you can change the, the feather to a different style here there's also different models you could uh, have no hat but you could have this hair so I guess we'll go with this and we could change the color of that also and you can do that with the armor as well here different style of armor uh, we only have one model available for the armor, but but this is fine. And you could do it with the with the arms as well here. Change it to style two, so he's uh, sort of all in black. All right, that was just to show you that. Um, let's head back out here and click our warband. And when we do that, we can uh, change the name of our warband up here. Right now it's named uh, the Empire's Braves, but we want to call it something else. Let's call it Company of Wolves. So we are a mercenary band after all. You can also see how far our company has progressed XP-wise. When you uh, gain levels with your company, it'll open up new perks and also more slots for henchmen. We need to hire a hero and three henchman slots and you can see there are more slots here and they'll open up as we play and our warband uh, makes more levels so we have three different ones here but we need to hire a hero because we have one hero slot open there are three kinds of soldiers there's the leader and the hero and the henchman and then you can also find some impressive uh, soldiers like uh, ogre, ogres and stuff like that but that'll be a while before we, uh, we find those so we'll hire this guy, Fritz Gordner. And you can see he's using a, a two-handed weapon here. And we can see what he can equip. All of these uh, melee weapons. He can also have a bow. And he can have uh, these kinds of armors. So we'll hire him for 30 gold. 
and it will hire three henchmen. And we can see we have a 195 gold left. So we'll hire these henchmen so we have a full contingent. And we have two choices here. We can either hire this uh, dual wielding guy as a henchman or a bowman. So let's hire one bowman and two of these dual wielding grunts. Task completed. So now we have a full warband here. We filled all of the slots that we have opened up. We also have reserves over here. We could hire more and put them in reserves. They don't uh, need upkeep when they're in the reserves. So that's it for warband management. Let's head back to the war camp. So now we can visit the veteran system here. And this is persistent for all of your warbands when you complete tasks in the game. And you can see the tasks over here. You'll gain uh, levels in the veteran system. And the veteran system perks and skills will apply to all of your warbands across your account. So we have one. Unspent skill point here. Uh, just show you the commander here is uh, reduces upkeep costs for leaders and impressive warriors by uh, four gold after a successful mission. Contact alchemist, establish contact with an alchemist each day. There is a five percent chance to receive a free potion consumable from this contract. And then there's different contracts, and also you can uh, you can get better at hackling, so get more for the stuff you sell and stuff like that. But we'll pick this one, commander. And we'll head back out of the veteran system. So now all we have to do today is uh, is go on the campaign, but we can also just briefly visit the shop here. Here you can buy and sell equipment. You can also find equipment on the mission. So we could get heavy armor. It's a lot of uh, armor absorption, and uh, it uh, has a chance to uh, disrupt if you're trying to cast spells. It's also bulky, so your dodge chance. Uh, it's removed 20% and you have less movement range. It's also cumbersome, so a chance to pass climb, leap and jump down tests are minus 15%. But we could go with light armor here. Since a leader is using a, a shield, the dodge chance is not that important because we could do a parry instead. So I think I'll get the two light armors. Ah, it's only one for sale, so we'll just get one. Head into the uh, inventory here. Equip the light armor. There we go. So you can see he can actually use a pistol, but he doesn't have a pistol in his inventory here. So we could give him, a, we could buy a pistol and give him that, so he can uh, shoot at range. So then he can switch between two weapon sets. So let's do that. Let's head back to the shop and buy this pistol here. We'll give it to our leader here. So now we can uh, he can switch to the pistols and shoot from range in the combat. All right, let's head back out. Let's do our first mission. So here's the campaign. When we click that, we go to the campaign map here, and we can see the available missions. So there's this one, Pillagers, and that's a normal difficulty. It's a, a weird stone rush, which is a bonus objective, we'll get into that later. But uh, the amount of weird stones available here are poor, and the amount of caches with the uh, loot is also very poor. So it's not that uh, great. This one is uh, very poor on average. We could also pay for scouts to go out and find more missions. But that costs five gold, which is actually quite expensive in the beginning. Um, one warband deploys tightly around its wagon, while the other is scattered randomly around the area, scared by something. All right, so let's hope we are the ones that are deployed tightly around the wagon. Otherwise, we start at a bit of a disadvantage. And here we can see Company of Wolves, select the warriors you wish to deploy for this mission, and we have already selected our warriors. So let's launch and deploy. A ghastly manifestation frightened your warband and scattered them in the ruins. They soon recover from their fright, 
But before the warriors can regroup, an enemy warband arrives and deploys near their wagon. All right, so here we are in the deployment phase. Just waiting for the enemy to finish. In the top of the screen, you can see the uh, the turn queue, and it uh, is based on initiative. And it'll be calculated again at the beginning of each round. So you see the enemy is beginning, it has higher initiative. So it's probably Skaven. The icons with the question mark, we don't know where they are. So it looks like we are the ones that are scattered all over the place. If you press the shift key here, we'll get a map. Um, so we can see this is the enemy wagon that they're collecting stuff to and where their idol is. You can actually steal their idol and they could steal ours. So it doesn't look like we are all that scattered out. This guy over here and four guys here, so it's not so bad. So I guess we should just uh, loot some stuff and wait for the Skaven to come to us. This is uh, stuff that you can scavenge, these brown ones, and the green ones are weird stones. And this glowing point over here is uh, a place where we can jump down. So let's do that. Potential falling damage, and we have a 78% chance to make the jump. That went okay. Nothing to loot here. Let's just run down the stairs and out here. Let's take a look at the map. Yeah, it's actually the other way here. If you run back to this uh, blue thing here, we'll uh, trace back our movement and we can apply a movement in another way. You can see the movement points are blue and the uh, red ones are combat points that you can use for attacks. And spells and stuff like that. So now we're out of movement points, so we'll have to just stand here. If you run into a trap, that'll set your movement, so you can't retrace it back. We'll just stand here. An ambush stands, meaning that we'll uh, attack anyone that we see. Uh, so that's our wagon right there. You see those two glowing points in front of it? It is where you can steal the idol or steal loot from the wagon. Actually, we have to go uh, the other way to find something to loot here. It can be a little bit difficult to find your way around this thing here. It looks like uh, we have to go over here to scavenge. Maybe in this building. Ah, here we are. So let's scavenge. We'll open this chest, see what's in it. 20 gold crowns, that's pretty good. I'll take that. So now he's carrying those gold crowns, and uh, if he gets uh, taken out, our well, enemy can steal it from his uh, dead body. Right, let's get back out. It's actually uh, the other way that we will find the weird stone. So we move through here, but we can't move further, so let's just stand here. Confirm ambush stands. Uh, is there anything? Oh, there's a weird stone right over, over here. We can gather that. I'll take all of it. The more you gather during the mission, uh, the more of it you get to keep. If you win, you will also uh, get some of the stuff that's on the battlefield, but not all of it. So I think we'll just wait for the Skaven to come to us here. We're gonna ambush stains here. Alright, we 
just uh, stepped on a on a little trap there. And there's something else you can do. You can use this perception, and that'll uh, cost a little bit of movement points, but it'll show you highlight traps and stuff like that. Just do ambush stance here. So sometimes it's a good idea to use perception. So put him in Overwatch stance here, and he'll shoot at anything that comes by. Down this alley here. I think it's okay. I just want to make sure that the other guys, yeah, they can move through that building over there and come to his aid, I think. So let's just put him into Overwatch stance. A new round has started. So now it's our turn again. We're over here. So we'll head down, see if we can uh, scavenge that weird stone when it's our turn. So here we see our first enemy, and it's Skaven. So we ambush the one coming through the hole in the wall there. So it entered dodge stance. So let's head down here, see if we can uh, charge this guy. If we have to have him in movement. I guess we can't charge him, we'll just run over there. I guess he surprised us. So let's just hit him. That's a miss. When you swing the big weapons, like the two handers here, uh, they take more of the red action points after your first swing, and you also get tired from swinging it. So it'll be less effective with it. So these two guys here will need some backup, that's for sure. So enter dodge stance here. Increase our chance of uh, dodging his attack. So now we need to uh, to get our leader all of the way back over there. But I guess we'll pick up the weird stone on the way. If we can find it, it should be right here. Ah, it's actually in the building. Or on the second level. Alright, never mind then. We'll just uh, hurry back to where the fighting's going on. Run all of the way down there. So let's attack this guy. You can see uh, he doesn't have that much <laughs> HP left. So now we're out of uh, action points for attacking. So let's do a dodge stance. See if we can take it out here. I think that uh, I don't think we can stand here and attack. We're too close to uh, a friend. So let's head down here. Maybe we can help here. So now we uh, just exited the zone of our friend. You can see the the friendly circle and entered the red circle. So now we can attack. So there's enough space here for two guys to attack. And also now we outnumber. The scape in here, so it'll have to do a roll to see if it gets scared and tries to run away. It's an all alone roll, I think it's called. Let's just attack it. And a nice hit. We don't have uh, any movement points for dodge stance or anything like that, and we can't attack, so we'll just have to end the turn for, for this guy. And now we need to uh, get this guy moving. Actually, just go and uh, loot over here first. Let's scavenge. We'll take those gold crowns. I just need to see where we are on the map here. So let's just jump down here, I think. I'm not sure we'll uh, be able to get a shot from up here. I took fall damage. <laughs> Clumsy guy. Alright, so we move around here. And we can take a shot at the Skaven over there in the hole. So we'll do that. And that's a hit. 
That's all we can do in the turn. A new round has started. So they evened the numbers there. Just waiting for the Skaven to, to finish their turn. Ah, there's one coming from the back there. Ah, that was not part of the plan. But uh, luckily, our leader is coming around that corner soon. So help out the bowman. So now it's our turn. So let's hit this guy here. Maybe maybe we can take him out. Actually, let's uh, if you press the space bar, we can see he has an ability that we can use Squire's Curse. If you press the space bar, we'll get a, a skill description here. Single enemy targets a melee attack that deals regular damage. If hit, the target's uh, switch weapons action is blocked for one turn. Ah, okay. Doesn't matter. We're not trying to block this guy from switching weapons. So we will uh, just attack him. Uh, we took him out. So now he's out of action, which basically means that he's uh, incapacitated and will be removed from the battlefield in the next round. But until then, you can actually loot him, uh, his weapons and stuff like that. So we'll do that. This is loot. So we'll grab his spear and his shield. And this is just for bonus objectives, uh, but this is not part of our bonus objective. This is troops, bugs, uh, throat cutters, but we are looking for masses, guns, uh, warp trinket. So we'll just leave this, it's of no use to us. So, we'll head over here. And we will attack this Gaven. So now it's outnumbered and we'll have to do a, a roll for all alone <laughs> uh, in the next round, if it survives. Yeah. So we missed that. And we can actually press the uh, B key. We can see all of the debuffs on uh, Fritz Gordner here with his uh, halberd. So we can see that he has two-handed and uh, he's got a lot of uh, less me melee damage because he's tired <laughs> from using it and swinging it. And that's for this round only. And some of it will reset for the next round, I think. So we'll enter dodge dance here. So now it's Lucian. And hopefully we can charge the Skaven down there attacking the bowman. So here we go. We'll charge. That'll uh, do extra melee damage. And it'll also, if we hit with the melee damage, it'll make uh, the Skaven have a higher chance of missing on a counter attack. So we got a nice hit there, and now that one is uh, also all alone since it's up against two people. It'll be a little bit scared. It's outnumbered, and we have uh, enough to do another attack here as well. But that's a miss. So we can either do dodge stance or parry stance because we have a shield, and parry stance has a f higher chance of uh, success, so we'll use that. So we can uh, block the Skaven's attack. So let's see if we can hit it. Oh, that's a miss. Just have to enter dodge stance here, because we are dual wielding, we don't have the parry stance. So we should be able to take this one out now, if we can hit it. There we go, it's down. Out of action. Let's just loot it. Let's just grab these two things here. And then we'll head up here to help the other guys. So now it's really up outnumbered. <laughs> but we, uh, we don't have enough movement points to enter any stands, so we'll just uh, end the turn here. And if you look up into the left corner, you can see there's a blue bar and it says 40 and 16. And 40 is the amount of morale points that we have now. 
and 16 is sort of the, the threshold for when you have to do a, a flea roll, a routing roll if you want to call it that. And if you fail that, you, uh, your, your company will, uh, will route and you lose. And you can see that the Skaven are getting pretty close to the, the threshold of 16. And the, when they get below that, they'll have to do these uh, rolls and see if they flee from the battlefield. So now we can switch weapons on a bowman here. I'll do that. And you can see the cost of that is one uh, combat point and two movement points. So we'll go over to uh, to the dagger and we will hit this game in now. And that attack will cost us two combat points. And we got a hit. And we'll enter dodge stance with the bowman. A new round has started. So this Gaven here is the one that we need to uh, take out in order to uh, to complete the bonus objective. We need to loot his uh, his item. So that, that right there was the all alone chip, and it succeeded. It so it'll attack a leader here. If we enter the lock here. We can see roll all alone tests succeed. That's a Skaven that was alone. And this one's also alone. So it'll also have to, to succeed it. Alright, let's hit it. So that's a nice hit. Do another attack. And now it's stunned as well. Meaning that it'll not be able to attack in the next round. And it's also easier to hit it when it's stunned. So now it's Lucian's turn. We'll just attack. We'll enter Paris Dance. So now we should be able to take this one out. Because it's, <laughs> it's down for the, for the count. There we go, out of action. So you can see that now, uh, now the morale meter there dropped way below the threshold of 16 it's down to six so now they'll uh, they'll have to do those free rolls to see if they are routed from the battlefield uh, actually that's not what we're looking for some war block pistols we'll grab that we'll also grab the sword this one's called neck sharp whiskers and if you look at the bonus objective up there, Mark for Death optional, it says uh, put the following warriors out of action and claim their belongings. Massa Skarns, Warp Trinket. So I guess it's uh, this wasn't it. Alright, let's uh, head back to where the other fight is. Maybe we'll be able to charge it from here. Yeah, we'll uh, charge it. That took it out of action. And that's a win. So we get this report here. We can see we didn't suffer any casualties. Nobody was put out of action. And we put four of their guys out. And we can see our most valuable warrior was Fritz Gordner. And next <laughs> was the Skaven next Sharp Whisker. We didn't complete all objectives, so we didn't get extra XP. Uh, we got Battleground Victory, we got, got some uh, word stones and stuff for that. Treasury total amount of gold crowns and word stones gathered during the mission. We picked up 25 and we picked up an extra shard also from looting. Uh, and we didn't get any uh, extra rewards. A warrior needs a bit of luck and a lot of skill to win a Task battle. Completed. But most of all he needs strategy. You have managed to find the winning mixture. Now just be careful not to lose it. So now uh, our warriors are awarded experience. So our leader got 2 XP for surviving the mission. And this guy here got uh, 1 extra XP for being most valuable warrior. And 1 extra XP for putting out one guy. So he has one unspent point that we can spend. 
So your victory has afforded you time to loot a portion of the remaining redstones and treasures in the area before returning to the hideout. You have acquired the following spoils both during and after the battle. So this is all we got. As you can see we got a lot of weapons and some redstone fragments and actually a pretty good loot of coins. And now we have to pay our guys. You can see that we owe 13 gold to our warriors. Uh, we can either pay them individually here click on them and pay them or we can pay the all of them here if we press the warband tab let's just do that we'll pay all of them if we don't pay them they will not be able to use them in the next mission if, and if you don't pay them for a while they'll leave uh, permanently so if you run out of gold that'll be a problem um, let's level up our guys here so he has one unspent point in uh, Marshall so we could put it into weapon skill that increases melee resistance, increases melee hit chance, increases parry chance, and increases warrior rating by one. We could put it into accuracy, increases critical hit chance, increases critical hit damage, bypasses 2% of target's dodge chance. It's also a ballistic skill here. And uh, he can use uh, bow, crossbow, dueling pistol and pistol. I think I'll put it into weapon skill. And this guy's only sporting a dagger, so we can give him uh, this sword. That's a better option. Guess we'll give him a shield also. If if, uh, if some other soldier attacks him, he can switch to a sword and board. Let's head out into the war camp here. You can see the campaign is now locked. That's because we have to pass the day. You could also enter skirmish and that means that you can take this warband and you can play against another player online or you could play against an AI in a skirmish match. And you would also uh, gain XP from that and loot. But if your warriors get injured or, or killed, that's also permanent. So pass the day. New shipment request arrived. So now we got the daily report here and pass the day. Your warband is hale and hardy. Uh, management and smuggling. You have received a new sh shipment request from Baron von Leitdorfer. Visit the smuggler's den to find out more. And this is a game mechanic that's very important. So let's head into smuggler's den. Visit the smuggler's den in order to sell the weird stones you have gathered during missions. Weird stone smuggling is your primary source of income and should not be neglected. You may sell to several factions around Mordheim that are willing to purchase your stock. In addition to earning gold crowns, your reputation with each faction will increase as you sell Weirdstone to them, earning rewards and bonuses for reaching certain milestones. It is recommended to fulfill the requested shipment from your primary faction first and foremost, and then sell any excess Weirdstone to the faction of your choice. And this is our primary faction, Baron von Leitdorfer, and he requested 100 weight of Weirdstone, and we have 10 days to uh, fulfill that request. And if you fail four requests from our primary faction, our campaign ends, that war band is just done. So yeah, you have to fill these and you have to make sure that you get enough weird stone to fill them. And you can see that these different kinds of weird stone has a different weight. This is just one. And this one here is, uh, oh, we don't have any shards, but that, that would be more. And we have, uh, if we had this, it would be even more weight. So we get to a 100 weight and we would send that shipment to them. And you can see reputation bonuses here. Loyal agent gain one additional day to fulfill wordstone requests. Item gift one. Uh, free athletic focus, normal qu quality, also added to market rotation. So, so it opens up some perks. The more reputation you have with a certain faction. And there's also a Sigma's uh, Haven here. A skill discount leadership reduce the training cost of leadership skills by 10% and Brigandsburg skill discount alertness reduces the training cost of alertness skills and so forth. So you can uh, mix and match where you try to uh, gain reputation and gain perks but you always have to, to fulfill your primary factions requests in order to not lose the game. Alright guys. We have 10 days to fulfill that request and that means a lot of missions to go. We'll end this video here and continue in the next one with Company of Wolves. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.